Uh, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, here on your election command center, Parliament of Ghana drops to 271 seats as Speaker of Parliament declares four seats vacant. We hear the various reactions to the, this latest development in Parliament, the Legislative House, and it is unprecedented in our parliamentary history as a country and also essentially in this democracy that we are practicing. And in fact, this eighth parliament has been giving us a lot to talk about right from its inception from day one of this eighth parliament being sworn in up until this dying days of this eighth parliament. This is their last sitting before we go for the elections. And essentially, it's going to lead to the death of this eighth parliament for that matter. And they're giving us a lot to talk about. Now, earlier today, the Speaker of Parliament delivered his ruling on this petition for some four seats to be declared vacant and still on this matter we're going to be assessing the implications of the of these vacant seats on the make and operations of parliament in the coming days but let's hear from the speaker of parliament earlier today delivering his ruling on this petition as was submitted by the tamale south member of parliament former minority leader harun idrisu Honourable members, it is important to point out that the Speaker is called upon by the standing orders of Parliament, particularly Order 18, to inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1B to E, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House that by the notification of the polls, the following members of Parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in Parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your patience and attention. That is the ruling of the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Alban Sumana, for Bagbing there, making reference to the law, the precedents, and also what has been the case in Parliament. Now, after this ruling, some reactions to this, as expected, obviously. Uh, Alexander Penyomarkin, who is the FUTU Member of Parliament, can safely say that until today, he was the majority leader in this 8th Parliament but he leads the NPP caucus in parliament. And this is what he had to say to this ruling. We've just witnessed a conspiracy between the speaker and the minority to bring confusion in the house. It is clear that Mr. Speaker avoided service of the writ to do the bidding of the NDC. It's so clear, but we believe in the law. 
we as the majority focus immediately immediately are boycotting parliament until this matter is determined by the Supreme Court. The, 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 the speaker has no right to interpret the constitution and it is so clear that what he did was to give advantage to the NDC and do the bidding of the NDC. We are not going to go further to litigate. We have a process at the court. We will fo follow it up. If the court makes a pronouncement, we will respect the orders of the court. But because we believe that the issues we have raised are issues for interpretation. Well, that's uh, Alexander Fenyo Markin there. And in fact, uh, also uh, reacting to this, uh, the now majority leader, Dr. Kesela forcing uh, at least per the implications of this ruling by the speaker, also had some words after this ruling by the speaker. We're going to have some engagement on this matter. Let's take a listen to Dr. Kesela forcing on the floor of parliament earlier today after uh, Alexander Fenyo Markin also spoke. I've just moved from minority to majority. In fact, the people of Ghana voted for the NDC majority. But if not certain machinations, this should have happened from day one of this parliament. But you see, finally we are here. We are here to do the business of the people of Ghana. We are here to begin the process to reset our country. Our country has gone through very difficult times. In fact, oftentimes, we have blamed, the people of Ghana have blamed Parliament for not standing up for the people of Ghana. But obviously, you can't blame the NDC minority because we are not having the working majority. Today, we have the working majority. And we begin the process to reset our country. We want to use this opportunity to assure the people of Ghana that the NDC majority was planned for the people of Ghana. Any day, any time. We will begin the process to move to the majority side and elect a new second deputy speaker on Tuesday. Yeah. We've gone through so much, so much as a country, and this cannot continue. We thank the speaker for standing with the people of Ghana, respecting the constitution of the Republic of Ghana, respecting president and the standing order of the people of Ghana, of the parliament of Ghana. You know, all of this, we thank the people of Ghana by standing for, 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 for standing the people of Ghana. Thank you very much. Well, you hear some of the NDC MPs now shouting behind him as majority leader. Effectively, that's what the ruling of this uh, by the Speaker of Parliament really means. And this is as a result of these four MPs who were petitioned by the Honorable Honor Idriso uh, be having their seats declared vacant. So, could you Asante, or Boafo, that's what I call him, a member of Parliament now, so his seat has been declared vacant. Um, because he decided to contest as an independent candidate in the upcoming election, Kujua Sante is or cannot hold himself as a member of parliament for the Zoom constituency. Again, same applies to Cynthia Mamle Morrison, uh, decided to go independent. He, she was serving on the ticket of the MPP as a member of parliament for the Agona West constituency. Same for Andrew Esiama Amuakon. The former member of parliament, you can say safely now, for the former constituency, decided, in fact, in, he was serving in this eighth parliament as an independent candidate, the second deputy speaker of parliament, and stay with us every step of the way because there are different angles to this conversation we're going to bring to you as to how the exit of all of these persons would impact on, for instance, the committees and that the leadership of parliament in terms of the, the the speaker because this man was serving as a second deputy speaker of parliament what what happens next and then also peter yao kwachiaka um who uh, was serving on the ticket of the ndc as a member of parliament for the memphis central constituency we had a lot to talk about him yesterday on the show so as a result of this particular decision by the speaker as you've got some reactions to it this is how the composition and the makeup, the outlook of Parliament right now. 
in terms of the numerical representation. Until today, this was how the picture was. The MPP had 137 MPs, NDC had 137 with the independent candidate Andre Siama doing business with the MPP. So that gave them the majority of 138, essentially. After today, here's how the picture looks like. You would have the NDC now, because they've lost, effectively lost one seat with the Amenfi Central constituency that's a member of parliament now having his seat declared vacant, they lose one seat, reducing the number to 136. For the MPP, effectively, based on the impact of this ruling, they have lost three seats. Cynthia Morrison, Kojo Asante, and then also you have the former member of parliament who was doing business with them. So that reduces the number from 138 to 135. So based on the numerical representation and also the business and the rules, the standing orders of parliament, you have it here that the NDC effectively become the majority in this eighth parliament. This eighth parliament has never stopped giving us a lot to talk about. And, and really, in the, even in these dying days of this eighth parliament, here we have it. Another unprecedented development. One that will definitely get a parliamentary history and analysis uh, giving us a lot to reference. But Dr. Rashid Rahman, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, is joining us on Zoom right now. Dr. Rashid Rahman, thank you for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. I mean, looking at everything that's happened today uh, and, and what this eighth parliament keeps giving us, when we spoke three days ago, you had indicated that there's going to be just one outcome. And that's exactly what's happened today. What are the implications beyond the numbers I've just shown you with this development in Parliament today? Um, Alfred, I, you know, the, the leader of the NDC in Parliament, the majority leader, because uh, right now I, I believe that um, until we get to the next, the next uh, meeting, of, of this parliament, um, I don't know what what the current situation is. I mean, following the ruling of the speaker declaring uh, those seats vacant, but Honourable Afeni Markin has indicated that um, they have gone to court. Um, we wait to see what the verdict of the court is. But like you rightly said, uh, this is. Uh, parliament that is uh, no short of drama right from day one. Uh, we see drama keeping uh, unfolding, if if I can put it that way, up to this uh, <laughs> this last few days of uh, of of the parliament. Um, we are going to see. So let me make some predictions, uh, Alfred, if I, if I may. Um, we are going to see a crippled parliament uh, going forward until mm. the, the, the court uh, makes a pronouncement and, and passes a verdict on the ruling of the right honorable speaker. The MPP side has already signaled that they, they are not going to be part of any parliamentary work. We are going to see the NDC, of course, they can always have quorum, because quorum is one third, and, uh, and I think they have enough to form a quorum. And fortunately, we have private members, business, even in our new standing orders, uh, it's time for private members' business. And today I was part of a conversation on a private member's bill on international uh, financial and business transactions. Uh, so I think there are others that uh, the parliament can get itself busy with. But I can see the Supreme Court quickly ruling on this because I believe they will read the mood of the nation and they will not like uh, the political atmosphere to uh, to be um, 
you know, um, Alfred, I'm choosing my words very carefully. Mm. Yeah, we we already are in an election season. True. And, uh, you know, the conversations going on sometimes are not pleasant. Uh, if we have this added to it and the situation is left to linger for long, uh, it will add a necessary kind of drama right. to the already difficult and uh, very tense kind of political environment that we are in right now, where mm -hmm. the MPP is trying to do what nobody, no party has done before. Right. And then the NDC is also trying to do what no party has done before, breaking the eight, and then on the other side, having the former president come back. Uh, so these are already kind of uh, very trying moments in the political history of our country. So my prediction is that I can see the Supreme Court getting in and tackling this matter very quickly. And I can also see uh, most likely uh, the court, you know, um, the, 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 the delivering some this, judgment this, uh, on this matter as yes, quickly as yes, possible. And, but this, there was a point yeah. that you made earlier, Dr. Ashidraman, about the business of parliament being crippled as a result of yeah. this position that the the NDC, the MPP caucus have taken, that they're going to boycott the business of the House until the Supreme Court makes a determination on this matter. I'm, I'm going to get into some of the pending bills and other businesses of the House. But then again, as historic as this is, what, what that means is that we're going to be seeing a lot more negotiations and compromise, is it not? Because this former majority were expecting that they would use the numbers to get a lot of the business of the executive done by the House, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Um, so, you know, those who uh, watch Parliament, as we do, um, will tell you that around this time, that is when, okay, first of all, in the, in the dying moments of every meeting of Parliament, that is when a lot of government business is done. I think it's also the case if we stretch it in the dire moments of, uh, of the tenure of a parliament, that is when a lot of important and finished business of government usually is done just so that the government can wrap up its mandate um, uh, before the elections are held and before parliament stands dissolved. Um, if this situation remains the way it is and we have the MPP not participating in parliamentary business. Um, it would mean that we are not going to get most of what is unfinished by this current administration that they would have loved to try and finish uh, before midnight January 6th uh, will, not, will not happen. Uh, and, and that is where I think the Supreme Court will be very interested in this matter and would come in um, very quickly. If the NDC um, continues to run the business of the House, they can only do most of the time private members uh, work. Mm -hmm. And Alfred, the danger is that, I mean, they can do all the work that they want to do and they can pass bills into laws. But, you know, it would mean that they might not get the assent of the president as it is required right. by law to make some of these things uh, become become laws on our statute books. Mm -hmm. So, and we have already seen some of that happen. Yes. I.e., I mean, the witchcraft bill. Yes. That uh, I mean, private members bill from led by the MP for Medina. We have seen, yes. yes, we have seen the LGBTQ um, issue and mm -hmm. that is pending and that is uh, the president communication from his office said cease and desist from even bringing this near my office and so on and so forth. Um, if the NDC side alone goes ahead to do 
um, the business of the House, private members' business. It can only stay in Parliament. It cannot go anywhere. Uh, so in light of all this, I think it's in the interest of everybody. Uh, the NDC can go ahead and have the majority. Uh, you know, but I believe it will be a difficult majority, if I can put it that way, uh, especially because of the fact that the person that is sitting on the executive chair, I mean, is different from... Uh, so maybe if I can put it differently, Alfred, the government might not have its business done. And, 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 uh, and, and Parliament NDC would also not, 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 not have, have its, its business done, its business done by the I mean, executive. And we would have, we would have a stalemate. And do we want a stalemate at this time? Um, I don't know, but you know, for the purposes of our our democracy and uh, the purposes of accountability and transparency and so on, if this situation remains as it is and is upheld by the court, I think it will be very good for our democracy because then the government side would have to negotiate with the new majority. I see. And, and there will be a lot of compromises and negotiation, which I think for us citizens, uh, there couldn't be anything better we are looking for than that. And, and based on how this Eighth Parliament has conducted itself, can, can you trust them with that? With, with, that, that? with everything that's happened now, the utmost interest of the Ghanaian would come to play? I ask this because you are aware of previous conversations we've had about how this Eighth Parliament, a hung parliament as it is, whether it has actually benefited the Ghanaian people in terms of the increase in accountability and oversight responsibility that we, we, we expect of this, of a parliament, and not being described as a rubber stamp. But we've had instances yeah, I mean, where some controversial issues have just gone through like that. Yes, indeed. And I think... Uh... So that is what we all have to watch. And, and for me, uh, it is also a very big, big, um, big lesson to uh, whoever um, will call itself, I mean, if the NDC eventually becomes the majority, I think Ghanaians will be watching very carefully, especially as we are getting close to elections. So uh, how would they use this, this newfound power because previously, uh, they would argue that, yes, even today, the, uh, the leader of the, the NDC caucus in parliament said, you know, Ghanaians expected a lot from us, but we are not the majority. So if this stays, now they are going to be the majority. And they would as well be advised to, to put Ghana first and, and do our business uh, with all the seriousness that it deserves. Uh, otherwise, I mean, elections are just around the corner. So that would be a very big test. Right. See, okay, is that how you are going to use maybe the power that you are asking Ghanaians to give you on December 7? So maybe with all this uh, in mind, right. Alfred, uh, it might be the case that if this situation remains if the ruling of the right honorable speaker is upheld we are going to see some serious accountability uh, especially on some important matters of state like galamse and, and 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 all the other issues very important uh, perspective. Now and indeed yes. very important perspective that you bring to this conversation dr Rashidraman. thank you so much all this must kneel to the benefit of the ghanaian people with what's happened today thank you dr Rashidraman, is the director of the africa center for parliamentary affairs he understands the workings and the business and also the procedures of parliament it's the best person to speak to at this time but he made a point about the business of the house as in parliament being crippled because the NPP caucus now have decided that they are going to boycott the business of the House until the Supreme Court makes a determination on this matter. But to whose benefit or detriment would this be, this decision that the NPP caucus have taken? And this is where I bring you to the business, the pending business of the House before this 8th Parliament is dissolved.
this is their last sitting before election day, December 7. Some of them will retain their seats. Some of them lose their seats. The life of this parliament ends and all of this would have to be done. Take a look at this. There are two of the president's Supreme Court nominees who have not been approved yet. So if you have the NPP caucus saying, look, we're going to boycott parliament until the determination of the Supreme Court on this matter, this should come to mind. Two Supreme Court nominees have not been approved. There are tax waivers in excess of $350 million for some five companies under the 1D1F that have also not been approved. The International Development Association, that's IDA, World Bank loan facilities, have also not been approved. There are pending bills before Parliament, the Architects and Registration Bill 2024, IOCO Amendment Bill 2024, Vaccines Development and Manufacturing Bill 2024, Environmental Protection Bill 2024, and this one, which has generated a lot of controversy, the measure of the ECG and the Northern Electricity Development Company Bill 2024, the people who are kicking against this, the Business Regulatory Reform Commission Bill 2024 is also pending, the Office of the Administrator of School Lands 2024, and the University of Local Government and Development Bill 2024. You also have the Nuclear Power Ghana Bill Authority Bill, Thermal Power Authority Bill 2024, and this one, the Major of the Energy Commission and the PRLC Bill 2024, and also this one that you've heard a lot from the VRA senior staff who are kicking against this proposed merger between the Voter Review Authority and the Buipa Authority. There's a bill in Parliament on this. They are kicking against it. That's, that's also pending. The Competition Bill 2024. You see all of that. So there's a lot at stake with this decision that has been taken today and also the consequent decision that the NPP caucus have also taken to, as it were, boycott the business of the House until the determination of this case at the Supreme Court. But there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about and what's going to be happening in Parliament. Well, there are a number of MPs as well who have now been criticizing uh, the former Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Aaron Michael Quay, on that decision involving the former IMP uh, prior to the 2020 elections. There are MPP MPs who say that, look, now they accept that he was wrong in taking that decision to have the former MP sacked and, and declaring his seat vacant because that's been the precedence for today. Let's hear from your Honorable Governor Tyree Hammond, Katie Hammond, and then also I'll tell you about what Davis and Sopoku has also been saying. Take a look. We think it's but, very wrong. It's uh, fundamentally wrong. Exactly. Yes, there are these provisions uh, that is exactly alluded to, the but as far as we are concerned, the import of those uh, provisions, uh, are, the, the import is not what he has articulated today. Uh, these individuals have said that going into the next election, going into the next election, not this parliament, going into the election 20th uh, in December, and going to next parliament, 2025 parliament, they propose to be independent candidates. We think that it's absolutely nothing to do what they are standing now as members of the current parliament. We think it is wrong. We uh, filed documents in the Supreme Court for interpretation. The speaker himself has said that these are matters uh, which call for um, uh, for interpretation. Somehow he's taking the matters out himself and uh, um, um, he's rude uh, that um, uh, those people have uh, um, uh, vacated their position thereby declaring, um, um, declaring us in the minority, straight away in the minority. So I suspect he's going to um, ask them to move over and then they take up government. This is horrendous, it's atrocious. I haven't seen anything like this in my life. But then talking about my life, this particular parliament has been something extraordinary. I mean, he, he based this on precedent. He no, says, no, no. He says, okay one. Well, well, he says it's not binding on no, well, him. Yeah, but he goes on to say that. Yeah, sure. That's it. That, of course, you would say you could say that. In law, technically, he is right. And there is something he calls a precedent, which though is not binding on him. But of course, he says that um, he could could adopt it. That is fine. But we are saying now that that okay thing, uh, I don't even recall it, that okay thing was a law. Yeah, but, but you didn't say that at all. No, but that's, what that's the trade minister there. Katie Hammond says that Professor Aaron Michael Kwe ruling in the Formula case was unlawful. He was, he was wrong to have done that. Well, guess what? He's not alone in this. David Sansopoku, who is a member of parliament for the Empriaso constituency, I spoke to him earlier on 3FM Hot Edition, and he also indicates that 
the Professor Michael Quay ruling on this from an case, which has now been a reference point and precedence for this case we're talking about today. What was a wrong ruling? Yeah. Now, let's, let's listen to it. Sopoko is a member of parliament for the Impraeso constituency. Is joining us right now. Appreciate your time. Uh, Mo Davis and Sopoko, good evening to you. It will be an understatement. Um, we are extremely shocked and a bit surprised by the constitution of our land. Um, clearly, it's not uh, finding its way to the very body that must protect it. But that's it. I mean, that is the beauty of the rule of law, that is the beauty of democracy. And uh, it's important that we look forward to uh, correcting it. I mean, there are, there are, there are, there are an institutional body that, that um, could correct this. And um, at the court, we are considering various possibilities. And I'm sure that at a proper time, we'll get back to you on this. I think if you say correcting it, or you, you, you're going to the courts? Well, of course. I mean, uh, we, we, have, we have the Supreme Court, to, which is closed with the powers exclusively to interpret um, uh, the constitution of the land. Because, I mean, there are case laws that go to affirm that the constitution of the land is supreme. Uh, you cannot look into the future begin to punish people for a decision that they want to take in the future. Currently, there are members of parliament belonging to a particular side, and they have the intent to represent their constituency in the next parliament as independent or as belonging to the NPP. Right. Mm -hmm. That for me should, 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 should not be a business. We should, we should not be too bothered about it. It infringes upon Article 21 of our Constitution that promotes or that talks about freedom of association. But uh, in, in that I same mean, spirit, the Formana MP, yeah. the Formana MP yeah. prior to the 2020 yeah. elections, was punished yeah. by your party for his intention it to contest. Uh, it, it was wrong then, it is wrong today, it will be wrong in the future. So you're saying that Speaker Michael Quay was wrong to have admitted well, that... Uh, Well, so that's it. There you have it. Um, he says that, um, yes, it was wrong. Speaker Michael Quay's ruling there was wrong then, and it is wrong now. Uh, Dennis Paveri Wadam, Esquire, is joining me in studio for a, a quick conversation on the further implications of this in terms of the composition of the, the committees of parliament and other related angles to what's happened today. Historic, unprecedented as we have it and a lot is happening, is it not? Yes, that's right. And this parliament seems to be presenting us with the most historic events. I mean, it will go down as the one parliament with very interesting developments that we've ever seen. But what today's ruling by the speaker presents to us is a complex situation that we need to take some time to appreciate. Mm -hmm. Like you rightly pointed out, now what it means is that the make of the parliament would effectively change, even though um, members of the NPP caucus are unwilling to yield to this new position. Mm -hmm. But as was pronounced by the speaker, it effectively means that the NDC now has 136 seats, the MPP 135 seats, and that effectively makes the NDC the majority in parliament That's as right. it stands. Mm -hmm. Now, what that also means is that because the second deputy speaker is one of the MPs whose seats have been de declared vacant, it means that that position has now become a vacant position for which it has to be filled. I'll show you shortly how that would play out if there's an attempt to fill that position. Perfect. Also, what it also means is that by convention, the, the majority in the House would usually sit to the right-hand side of the Speaker and the minority to the left-hand side of the Speaker. Now, with the latest development, it would mean that there would have to be a switch where the NDC caucus in Parliament would move to the other side of the House and then more like a crisscross. Mm. Oh, but the MPP says that the MPP caucus says they will not be in Parliament. But if they happen to go, we are likely to see that change in the by virtue of this particular ruling today. Also, there would be some changes in the uh, leadership of some of the committees. And we'll right. refer to the parliamentary standing orders to show you how some of these um, committees would effectively also change in their composition as in the leadership. Now, starting off with the 
the second deputy speaker. Mm. This is what Article 96 of the 1992 Constitution says. Super. Talks about deputy speakers, mm -hmm. that there shall be two deputy speakers of parliament. One E, who shall be elected by members of parliament from among the members of parliament, and both of whom shall not be members of the same party. Now, mind you, the eighth parliament, as we've had it till today, mm. had two deputy speakers. One from the MPP, the other was an independent candidate. That's right. But from the look of things, because the second one was doing business, it may appear as though there were two MPP, but no. He was in that capacity as an independent candidate. The former MP. Yes. So if the provision now says that both of whom shall not be members of the same political party, now there's no independent candidate in parliament per this ruling, True. then it presupposes that the person most likely to occupy that portfolio or that position will be an NDC member. Interesting. Because the two deputy speakers must not come from the same, the party. same party. So in this case, uh, Jose Usu, the Who is, first deputy. Yes, Usu, first deputy, MPP. And then speaker so, when, obviously. Yes. Then, yes. So the second deputy speaker would not be from, from the same party the as same party. Jose Usu. So that's, that's, that's the... So that's for the NDC to select. Yes, and already the... Now, I get conflicted. Majority, minority leader, yes. NDC leadership. Dr. Kessler for to, uh, at Tufosin was categorical about how they intend to make the changes come next week. Yeah. But let's look at how the, the committees will play out. Now, the general rule is that leadership of the committee, and in that spread, the standing orders of parliament, it's usually based on the, on the, and leadership by here, I mean, who chairs the committees. Right. Would usually be determined by the party that has the numerical strength, who has the highest number. However, there is a provision that says that for some committees, there are specific reference to some committees, that necessarily must be chaired by the party that forms the government. And those committees include the finance committee, the the Interior and Defense Committee as one of them, mm -hmm. and then some other committees. There are also a list of committees that could be chaired by the party with the highest numbers. Right. So just to be clear with the number of committees, that must necessarily be chaired by the members of the party that forms the government. You have the Finance Committee, you have the Committee on Finance, I mean, on Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, mm -hmm. the Committee on Defense and Interior, right. Committee on Security and Intelligence, mm -hmm. Committee on Employment, Labor, Relations and Pensions, and then the Committee on Constitutional and Legal Affairs. These committees must necessarily be chaired by the members of the party who form the government. The government. That's so the what it means is that we would not see any change in those committees, the leadership of those committees. Right. Because so, by the standing orders, they necessarily must be, must be chaired by members of part, um, 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 the party that forms the government. Mm -hmm. However, committees like the Appointments Committee, the Public Accounts Committee, Committees on Subsidiary Legislation, and Committee on, Ass on, on Assurances, and then Budget Committee. Those committees are chaired or to be chaired by members from the party that has the highest number in Parliament. In this wow. case, by the implication of today's ruling, because the NDC is in that side, then they would chair this. But there's also another exception to that, because for some of the committees, the leadership is already predetermined. And that's why I show you this particular slide. So appointments committee, for instance, you'd see that that it comprises a chairperson, a ranking member, and then some members who have already been listed. When you look at a committee like the Committee of Privileges and Immunities, they said it has, it comprises the first deputy speaker as chairperson. So that is already predetermined. Right. So in this case, already we have the first deputy, deputy speaker, speaker who is there. So mm -hmm. that will not be change. affected. Jose also will still be there. Exactly. Okay. When you look at a committee, a house, the house committee, it comprises the majority chief whip as chairperson. Now this will also be, become a matter to look out of because depending on who is considered the majority, the whips will also change. True. That Whether the N NDC so maintains now Frank and not on prayer will, 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 not, will lose I mean, this so to someone else. We'll have Ahmed Ibrahim and the others coming. Committees on petitions, you also find that some of the, 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 the chairpersons have already been fixed. Mm -hmm. But the, the, what's instructive to know that for some of the committees, like I mentioned in the first, in the first instance, they necessarily must be chaired by members who belong to the 
government or the yes. party that forms the government. But be as it may, there definitely will be some changes in the leadership of the committees coming next week. And we understand that the, uh, the parliament has been adjourned to Tuesday yes. uh, to make room for uh, the, the leadership to have conversations uh, as to all of this. What's yes. going to happen with respect to the... But then again, there's uh, also a statement coming in from the... The MPP ah, caucus. The MPP caucus, let's, but it's on the letterhead of majority caucus. Because they still insist that they form the majority in parliament. This is and it's, it's basically in reference to what the majority leader has been saying, that they did not think that it was um, the, the right of the speaker to have made the pronouncement the way he did it. They thought it amounted to um, interpretation of the constitution, which is a preserve of the Supreme Court. They also go ahead to state what they will do going forward, including boycotting all parliamentary sittings and not being a part of them until the matter is determined. It's a six-page document that just came in not long ago, in and they've been raising we'll quite a number of concerns. Yes, I think um, let's, let's have portions of it on the screen so that our viewers can... We'll just flip it through. In fact, there's more, there, there, you can find that on 3news.com. Yes, indeed. We're, we're back shortly after this break. A number of you have been sharing your views on this. We'll get to the people's voices. Welcome back to Ghana tonight and a number of you sharing your thoughts with us in fact very interactive on Facebook and also on X so many of your messages coming through and let the conversation continue the fundamental question is that if this president as was said by Professor Errol Michael Quay is indeed wrong then how can that be corrected that's the next leg of that conversation we'll have in the coming days. But this is the statement that Dennis Barberi Wadam was referring to. You can find the full complement of this statement coming through from the NPP um, caucus in, in, in Parliament. It's still it's on the letterhead of the majority caucus. It came through just minutes ago, hot on the plate. It gives a six-page detail and also their narrative or perspective to what happened in Parliament earlier today. Um, describing the speaker's decision as unprecedented and dangerous to the democracy of this country gives details um, of why they have taken the decision to boycott the business of the House, the constitutional concerns and judicial overreach of the speaker's decision, usurpation of judicial authority goes on and on. Just bear in mind this matter is a subject of a Supreme Court interpretation, so we will see in the coming days how things will play out and whether indeed uh, the the Supreme Court would speed up its hearing and ruling on this matter let's hear from you a number of you sharing your thoughts on social media whether you agree with the speaker or not that's a question that we put to you and the voice of Bassett says I agree with the speaker 100 percent and I invoke article 97 of the 92 Constitution and for the purpose of clarity 971 GH and thank you. And why not agree with the speaker? Our honorable speaker delivered his verdict based on previous experience and precedent, you say. And absolutely, that's the best decision he could have made. And if you, if you, if you people like, okay. Okay, they, it says there, okay. Fifi says the comedies are too much, okay. This, this has happened before, so it's nothing new. Nanaya uh, Makli, thank you. Uh, so many of you, uh, close to 350 of your messages on Facebook and on X, let the conversation go on. I want to say thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, stay with us because tomorrow morning on New Day, on Sunrise on 3FM, also on Nia FM, on Nia TV, Connect Akuma. We are heavy on this, so stay with us across all media general platforms. My name is Alfred Okonse. Have a good night.